Hey Ape Scholars, as we get ready to start a new school year, I wanted to take a minute today to share a little bit of my AP journey as well as some AP perspective. I wanna to speak to both the group of Ape Scholars that wrapped up their Apes experience this spring as well as the new batch of Ape Scholars about to get started this fall. Now in a faraway land called 2007, I was a high school freshman getting ready to get my first set of AP exam scores back so I understand the nerves and excitement that a lot of you probably feel on that day in July where you check your scores. Only my moment of suspense was a little more drawn out back in 2007 because I had to open a physical letter, unfold this giant document, and search all over this huge set of pages for my tiny little AP Gov exam score. Now at the time, I was as hung up on AP scores as any AP student because I knew that most of the colleges I planned on applying to only accepted fours and fives. So that first three that I earned on my AP Gov exam back in 2007 made me feel a little bit disappointed in myself. But what I couldn't grasp at the time was just how limited a scope I was using to view my AP classes. And I'll explain what I mean in just a minute with something called the rainbow of why. But first, to those of you who just wrapped up your APES experience this spring, I wanna remind you that the learning you did about our planet and the world around you in AP environmental science this year is valuable and it will continue to be valuable to you in a bunch of different ways that are independent of your exam score. I want you to consider the fact that the numerical score that you earned on your AP environmental science exam is just one measure of the value of what you learn in that class and we can think of this numerical score as a utility based measure of value. In other words what did this learning do for me or what can I get as a result of this learning? Obviously you want college credit for the hard work that you put into your AP classes this year, but we do a disservice to the magical transformational process of learning when we define it with just utility. Now this is where my favorite educational diagram of the past few years comes into play, the rainbow of why. This is a simple, powerful analogy from a fellow teacher and my favorite educational writer, Dave Stewart Jr. It represents all the different ways that learning is valuable using the colors of the rainbow. See, in AP courses especially, we spend way too much time up here in this tiny little band that represents the utility wavelength of learning. We say things like, you'll use this information in college, or this will get you out of your freshman year science course. And to be fair, these are important, tangible measures of the value of learning. But just like the visible light of a rainbow comes in a wide and beautiful range of wavelengths, so does the value of learning. And the really cool part about some of these shorter wavelengths at the bottom is that you get these benefits regardless of your exam score. But you have to learn to notice and appreciate them because our education system, our economy, really our society as a whole, there's kind of a crummy job of emphasizing them. There's a ton of novelty in learning about primary productivity and the 10% rule. What a strange new way of viewing a familiar park or forest if you see a bird or a rabbit and imagine the 10X biomass it took to support that individual organism. How cool is it to look at a tree and see atmospheric carbon sequestered in its bark? Here's this tangible, living, breathing, undeniably massive thing in front of you that's built out of molecules it pulled from an invisible gas out of the atmosphere. If you you practice this enough, novelty turns into beauty pretty quickly. And how about enjoyment? If you just finished your APES experience, you probably enjoyed a lot of the activities that you did in class and hopefully a lot of the people that you met along the way. Some of my best and most lasting friendships to this day were forged in the fires of AP World History and APUSH. And while college credit is great, there's no question to me that these decades long friendships are so much more valuable than four college credits. I know it's hard to imagine right now, but very soon in the grand scheme of things, you are going to enter a phase of life where your AP exam scores will not matter in the slightest. But the skills you developed, the thoughts you thought, the friendships you made, and maybe even a little bit of the knowledge you gained, those things can persist into this new phase of life that is the rest of it, if you're intentional about bringing them along with you. So whether you've just wrapped up your APES experience or you're about to start it, I have a piece of advice for you. Challenge yourself to take three things from this class. First, develop a skill that's relevant to your future or gives you more autonomy or serves one of your purposes in life. Second, use the knowledge of environmental science to see something around you in a novel and beautiful way. And third, and most importantly, try to make a friend that you keep long after this class is over. Friendship might be the most enjoyable thing in the world. As always, think like a mountain and write like a scholar.